like it. Here we are for chapter 12. I'm very excited to get going with this chapter. So let's begin. Before we start, let's not forget how chapter 11 ended. At the end of chapter 11, remember Mac is very injured at this point and he, the only way that Danny is thinking to make him feel better um, before anything happens to him, before he just passes out from his injury. Remember, he's got a lot of blood um, leaving right now, so he's really hurt. Um, Danny says, hey Mac, right? I'll make my mom have dinner with you, trying to get him his mind off of pain and injury and keeping him focused and awake, right? So that was the last thing that he said right before he finally got to see Ma as one of the nurses there. So right there, we left at a really good part, a really, a really feel good part. So we, we have our, our worries are kind of gone right now. We're feeling really good. We saw Ma, Danny saw Ma. We're feeling a little bit relieved and comforted right now. And then we're gonna get into chapter 12. But before we do that, let's go over the questions that are in your packet. That way we can be ready to answer them and start listening out for them already. So let's get those packet questions. Your first question, your chapter 12 packet asks, how did Danny help at the hospital? Okay, very good. So now we know that they're gonna get Mac to the hospital with Ma and the other nurses and doctors, and Danny's gonna be of some kind of help right now. So I think it's really good to think big about that. We're knowing he's gonna be a help at the hospital, so if it were a question, we would already know Danny has a character trait of being helpful. Danny is helpful because he helps out at the hospital during this really, really uh, important time. So it's a good little tip to know a character trait right there, something that describes what kind of person Danny is in this chapter. We'll get to find out. Remember, complete sentences. How did Danny help at the hospital? Danny helped at the hospital by, and then your answer. Really easy, just give the question right back into your answer. That's a very easy way to get a full complete sentence. Your next question tells you to describe the damage at the harbor. Okay, so this, the harbor is the entire area where they're at, the, wa um, the waterfront, the front of the water where if all those army sh and navy ships are docked at. So now we know that they're at the sea, you need to describe all of the damage. So during chapter 12, this read aloud, you need to really pay attention to all of your senses, all the descripting words, sight words, what are you seeing, sound words, what are you hearing? Maybe there's a smell in the air. After all of those explosions, I would think it would smell like fire and smoke, right? So that's what you're gonna need to use, use those senses to help describe the damage. You're gonna paint a picture in your mind and you write in a complete sentences what the picture is there, what is the scene. When we get to it in chapter 12, I'll make sure to give you a moment to pause and close your eyes and really picture what's happening. Your next question says, describe the damage at Pearl Harbor. It's the exact same question. Don't know why it's there two times but it has more lines so you can write more here, but it's the same question. Next question in your packet asks, what happened because of the attacks on Pearl Harbor? Very good question. So this is cause and effect. Something happened that made something else happen. The attacks from Japan happened, so the United States maybe decided to do this. Something is gonna happen because of this. You need to tell me what. What happened because of this event, because of these attacks? What happened after that? So you will, easy way to make this a complete sentence. Because of the attacks on Pearl Harbor, and then the answer, whatever happened because of that. This is the only time you can probably begin your sentence with the word because. Free, only this time. Next question, oh, there's a lot in this chapter, then maybe it's gonna be a really long one or a very important one. How did Danny evolve? That means change. 
every day we grow every day we change we get better we learn new things we learn more things we see we experience so danny just went through something really really incredible insane and wild and it's it's a big part of history too not just in his own life in the world it was a great great event in history how did danny evolve how did he change from the beginning of the text to now so remember in the beginning he's in hawaii and he just got there from new york city and he's not really happy is he how did that change how did he evolve how did he grow how did he change from then until now after this event you can start a really good way to start that is danny has changed from bring, from the beginning of the story by or in these ways anything like that how has he evolved and changed and those are all the questions for chapter 12 so now we can get into the story okay Chapter 12. The next 24 hours rushed by in a blur of sirens and blood and moaning, shouting men. Remember, they're in the hospital now. But Danny barely had time to think about any of it. He was too busy. After that first moment when he and Ma saw each other, Ma hugged Danny so tight she almost cracked his ribs. And he hugged her right back even tighter. She put Danny to work in the hospital. Hundreds of Hickam men had been wounded. They were the lucky ones. Dozens had died when a bomb destroyed the barracks while men were just waking up. Dozens more never made it out of the dining hall when a bomb set it on fire. Others had been hit on runways, in hangars, or while firing machine guns at the bombers. So right now we know a lot of lives were lost. So all of these wounded men in the hospital, they're the lucky ones. Yes, they're very, very hurt and wounded, but they're alive. There were only two doctors and two nurses at Hickam. That's it. They needed every spare hand they could find. Danny helped soldiers and volunteers make beds and swept glass off the floor. He rolled bandages and found extra blankets for men recovering from surgery. He watched Ma as she hurried from man to man, changing bandages, holding hands, never flinching. So she did everything she had to do, was very focused without taking a break, without saying, oh my goodness, what's going on? She just went, did her job, helped as many people as she could. Mrs. Sudo was right. She was brave. Character trait. A few times, Danny managed to peep in on Mac. Ma said he'd been given a powerful drug to take away the pain. A very powerful medicine. He'd almost lost half of his blood. But Ma said he'd survive. As bad as things were at Hickam, Danny knew they were even worse out on the harbor. All night, reports trickled in. The battleship Arizona, that's its na the name of a battleship, the battleship Arizona was gone, along with more than a thousand men. The Oklahoma, the name of another battleship, the Oklahoma was capsized, that means turned over, and more than a hundred men were still trapped inside. The California, was sinking. The destroyers, Shaw and Kassin, had exploded. Other ships were badly damaged. For most of the day, Pearl Harbor was a sea of fire. I'm going to stop you right there. And I want you to close your eyes and think about that sentence. For most of the day, Pearl Harbor was a sea of fire. Does that mean that the sea waters literally turned just into fire? No. But it means that all of those ships we just named were destroyed, exploded, turned over, and still on fire, that it looked like the whole sea was just a sea of fire. Close your eyes and picture that. 
Pearl Harbor was a sea of fire. You can open your eyes. What did you picture? This is a picture of what I saw in my head. Is that what you pictured too? Pearl Harbor was a sea of fire. So much damage. That might be one of your questions. Okay, let's continue. Even men who managed to escape the burning ships had little chance of survival. Hundreds of planes at different bases had been destroyed or badly damaged. Hospitals all over Oahu were overflowing with wounded men. Danny heard that his school had been turned into a hospital. Everybody expected another attack. There were whispers about a Japanese invasion of Hawaii. Danny tried not to think about this, about how easy it would be for the Japanese to take over the island with so many ships and planes wrecked. The hours ticked by with no more Japanese planes. But America was now at war. Danny knew it would be months or even years before the sound of the plane in the sky didn't make him jump. Stop right there. So he's saying it's going to be a long time before he even hearing a random plane didn't make him jump. Meaning because of this, now the sounds of any planes make him so scared because of what he went through. He's traumatized. It wasn't until the next morning that Ma and Danny finally got to sit together. Ma slumped in her chair, more tired than Danny had ever seen her. Her white uniform was battered with blood. But she listened closely as Danny told her the story of how he had been with Aki when he saw the first planes. Ma told about Ma told him about the terrifying first minutes when the bombs started dropping on Hickam. We'll remember this moment for the rest of our lives, Ma said. Then she let out a strange sigh. To think I got you out of New York because I wanted you in a safe place. She shook her head, and Danny could see she was fighting back tears. I'm glad we're here. The words came out before Danny realized what he was saying. And Ma liked hearing them. She smiled a little. Just then, one of the doctors peeked his head in and said he needed Ma for surgery. See you soon, she said to Danny as she headed out the door. Don't go away, okay? She was joking, Danny knew, because where could he go from here? But he thought, with shame, of his plan to leave on the Carmela. Would he really have gone? If those planes hadn't attacked today, would Danny be on that ship? He couldn't say. It seemed impossible that only 24 hours had passed. And how long is 24 hours? Yes, a day. It seemed impossible that only 24 hours had passed since he first saw those planes because everything seemed completely different now. Not just the harbor, now in ruins. Not just America, now at war. But Danny, too. Think, listen carefully. Maybe yesterday morning, he had been the kind of boy who would leave his mom. He would never know for sure. But he knew this. He wasn't that kind of boy anymore. What is he noticing here? What's different? That's the end of chapter 12. I hope you do really well on these questions. I hope I helped you with my winks and letting you think and giving you some kind of hints for those questions. Let's get this going. That way we can go on to chapter 13.